obviously you don't want to put yourself in a situation, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're going to get anywhere close to zina. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina." Don't come close to it. Don't get yourself started. You know, don't, don't ruin yourself. Don't get yourself in the relationship and then try to go to your parents and try to make it all halal and try to make people kick it under the rug. Allah is going to get you. Allah is going to get you if you offend Allah. Allah will get you unless you repent. And the only way to sincerely repent is to leave it. But what if you're already engaged in a relationship? What if you've already put yourself in that danger zone? What do you do? And I'm going to end on this one story. And this is in the tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah of Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 201. Verse number 201 of Surah Al-A'raf. And Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah titles this, Shabun Yatahaddath Min Al-Qabr. A young man who spoke from his grave. And Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he narrates that there was a young man Mulazim al-Masjid, who was always in the Masjid, min tullab Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al-Khattab. From the students of none other than Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He used to sit in all of the halaqat. He used to keep the company of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And his father was a shaykh. And when they say his father was a shaykh, meaning he was an old man. Not a shaykh as in a scholar, an old man. An old man, but subhanAllah, and, so, and, and the reason why these narrations would make it a point to mention that is because, you know, he was a person that had a level of independence. His father was dependent on him. So he was a talib ilm, he was a student of knowledge, he had the presence of Umar al Khattab, he had, you know, he was always in the masjid, and then one day on his way home, there was a woman that was calling him to her home. She was a beautiful woman. And he fell for it. And that shows you, by the way, just because you're religious doesn't mean that you're not going to fall for these things sometimes. You might fall for them. It's not about if you fall for them or, or it's not about how you fall for them or if you fall for them. It's about how quickly you get yourself out of the situation. So he followed her to her home. As he walked behind her, as she invited him into her home, as he walked behind her, تَذَكَّرَ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ He remembered the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the ayah number 201 of Surah Al-A'raf إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Those who truly are conscious of their Lord إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ If they are tempted by a little touch of the shaytan and again it shows you that you're never absolved don't feel bad if you fell for this once or twice don't feel bad. It's about how you get yourself out right now. I know some of you are in these relationships right now. Religious or non-religious. Shaitan got you. He touched you. He tempted you. He got you for a moment. He staggered you. He got you off your feet. And he was following this woman to her house and he remembered this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, At that moment, تَذَكَّرُوا They remember Allah. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ So now all of a sudden they can see you know, Basr and Basira are two different things. Basr, he can see right now, but he can't see. He doesn't understand what's, he's not really seeing. Like some of you are looking at me right now, but you have no idea what I'm talking about. And some of you are extracting things from the words that I'm saying that even I can't extract because the Prophet ﷺ said that sometimes the listener gains more or understands something more than the speaker. Some of you, because of your basira, because of your attentiveness, because your insight, you're getting things from this lecture that even I'm not getting. So Allah subhanahu wa says, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبُصِرُونَ So he's following along, then all of a sudden, what am I doing? Astaghfirullah. He passed out. He passed out. And the woman shut the door on him and she left him sleeping in front of her door. He woke up and he started to cry and he went to his father and he told his father what he did. And his father said, and he was crying when he was talking to his dad. He said, I can't believe I did this. And he was shivering out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't do it. He just was about to do it. But he caught himself. And his father said to him, Ya Bunay, oh my son, what did you say, you know, that made you stop? And he recited the ayah again to his father and then he fell and he died. He fell and he died. And this was a student of Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. 
So Umar ibn al-Khattab understood what happened. Umar ibn al-Khattab knew what happened. And they prayed janazah on him that night and Umar ibn al-Khattab went and he sat next to him while the people were, while the people were there after the janazah, after they buried him. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu talking to a student. Imagine what a, what a humiliating way, right? What a humiliating way for my student to go out. This was a talib ilm, a student of knowledge to the one who the Prophet ﷺ said, if there was to be a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. He was muhaddath, spoken to by the angels. He was a student of him, not a student of Umar Sulaiman or a student of Abdul Nasir, Sheikh Abdul Nasir Jang or Imam Suhaib Web. He was a student of Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Umar ibn al-Khattab was heartbroken. So Umar ibn al-Khattab sat next to his grave and he said, Ya Fatah, O oh young man, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ And for the one who feared the power of his Lord is two gardens. And the young man spoke from his grave, a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, فَأَجَابِ الْفَتَى قَدْ أَعْطَانِيهَا يَا عُمَرْ مَرَّتَيْنِ Allah has given it to me, O oh, Umar, twice. مرتين. Some of the scholars, they said twice because the time he held himself back from the fear of Allah and then the other time when he was speaking to his father, he got fearful again and he passed out again. Allah gave me four gardens instead of two. Why? I held myself. So if you're in that relationship right now or if you're thinking about getting in that relationship or if you think that Allah has created a cover for you so you can do whatever you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. Allah is the one who created the cover for you in the first place. But don't lose hope. Even the student of Umar got lost. Don't lose hope. Just pick yourself up before it gets worse. Before you end up losing your parents, your reputation, destroying your future prospects of a halal marriage. Get all of that out the way. Stop it now.